there's a gun in your hand and it's pointing to your head, you think you're mad, you're too unstable, kicking in chairs and knocking down tables in a restaurant in a West End town, call the police. There's a madman around, running down, underground, to a dive bar in a West End town. His own voice is classic. You like to listen to him talk just because it sounds nice, you know. Where I, for example, have a mid-Atlantic um, singing voice because I talk like this. <laughs> and it's not nice to listen to, you know, and I can't do my songs when I talk like this. <laughs> I just won this libel case against the Sunday people for this, um, this guy said he'd slept with me and, and this, that and the other. Now, the reason for me taking the Sunday people to court was because they lied, not because they accused me of being homosexual. But that day, my, my lawyer, not, not, it was nothing to do, I never said, you know, I never said do this. He stood on the steps and went, Robbie Williams is not and has never been a homosexual. Oh, for crying out loud. So anyway, that night we're at a restaurant and I went, I'm, I, I, they're gonna hate me now. Everyone's gonna hate me because they're gonna think, you know, I'm homophobic. And Chris went, right, we're going to heaven. And I went, right, yeah, all right, we'll go heaven. So we just bowled up at heaven and it wasn't the busiest of nights, but um, I had, a, I, had a, I had a really lovely night with them in there, sitting and watching the people watching us, watching them. And you know, and everybody was really nice to me and gave me a love <laughs> and were pleased to see me. I think if they started now, it'd be like David Walliams and Matt Lucas. You know, they'd get that kind of press attention. When I was at school, I didn't listen to bands and I didn't listen to much English music. We were all into hip hop and that's, uh, all that we bought, really, bought and stole, were hip-hop records. And it wasn't until um, my taste buds got a bit more mature that I started to listen to things like the Beatles and, and um, the Pet Shops and New Order. So all these things were quite new to me when I joined Take That, you know, as a 16-year-old. Then I got into behaviour and um, that became my friend. And I don't, you know, I don't want to, um, as silly as that may sound or as trite as that may sound, you know. While I was in Take That, there wasn't, uh, I, there was times when I wasn't very happy, you know. And um, I used to bike to Manchester from Stoke-on-Trent. And all the way up there, I'd have behaviour on. All the way up there and all the way back, you know, and it was 50 miles up and 50 miles back. And um, just that album took me, took me to a place where, I don't know, it was, I, I, felt, I felt protected in some way by these songs. You know, I'd found this secret world. As opposed to the 80s, radio all of a sudden decided that they weren't gonna have much color. You know, it's all gonna be, you know, it's either gonna be blue or red or green, and that's it. And anything that's skirting around the edges, we're gonna clear that off. Friendly Fire, that's just one of, for me, lyrically, one of the best songs that's been written in the last 10 years.